Okay, welcome back. Again, I apologize for the glare. Hopefully this won't be too long over here in this section. So we start off with the concession phase, and I brought over the four player cards uh, that I wrote down what their AI is going to be, because I have to remind myself what their strategy is uh, before we start this. And so what we do is we just tell players to grab a tile type. So uh, player one will use these curved tracks. Player two will use double whistle stops. Player three will use these tight turns. And then player four will, um, they will use these cities. And then uh, we will use these. Now, what, why do we do that? Um, remember, we're bidding on these and uh, it's just not worth getting out your money yet. So just pay for stuff at the end. And uh, I'll give you my first pro tip on this. If you get into a bidding war, in this game, there's a bit of a kingmaker element to this, um, which is why uh, some folks don't like concessions, and I agree. So let's say this is a five-player game, and player two and player three get in a bidding war with each other. Players one, four, and five will win. <laughs> and here's why. Having money early in the game is very powerful. And if two people get in a bidding war, they're going to outspend each other. And they're going to just keep raising up and up and up. And, uh, and whoever spent all that money is going to lose. And because they're going to have less money to invest in companies. And remember, this is an economic game. And you're spending your personal cash. So this is personal cash. You know, the victory points at the end of the game. So um, you don't want to get in a bidding war. Um, <clears throat> we tend to do player order in terms of who lost the last time we played. And I know if it's your first time playing, that's not an option. Uh, there are some of these that are just so much more powerful than others. And I have seen people at least engage in a bidding war over those, and that makes sense. Um, but you don't want to bid too high. You still do not want to bid too high. And my friends and I, we've reached a point where we're basically said, it's we're no longer bidding. It's just, you know, if you want this one, it's yours. Take it. And so we've sort of done a first come first serve kind of thing, but the bidding is allowed and if somebody wants to do it, they can, but they always lose. And um, so anyways, I know I spoke about that for too long, but uh, we're just gonna go in order and we will go last. Player one, Medici, likes to invest in Italian companies and invest in others. So one of the things we gotta get into is, what do all of these do? So I'm gonna put the camera down and Let's start with these two right here. These two are very simple. They're just companies that give you a revenue of $5 every operating round, and they don't do anything else. You just make money with these companies. So very simple. And you're gonna pay 20 bucks for them initially. Uh, that's why I, I remember I said on the first video that it was a $5 minimum bid. No, it's $20 minimum bid. It's $5, you know, whatever the face value is, the minimum bid. If you want to outbid somebody, it's a $5 minimum. Uh, so my apologies there. Next, uh, this one lets you put a token out for free. Now, I haven't talked about that too much, but here's a typical uh, company card. So this is BJV, this is a Norwegian company. They start the game as a regional. So they're gonna have to pay track rights and that's, they pay that to the bank. And so for $10, they can lay track anywhere in Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. So um, they will get a 20% discount if they lay track in any mountains or swamp, okay? Um, so, uh, you know, the government will basically let them get a kickback Whereas, like, if you or I did not start in Norway, we'd have to pay full price. So the Norwegians, uh, the Norwegian government will give this company a discount on going through specific regions. And you start with one token in the game. Now, as a regional, you're allowed to build at least one other token. And if you do, it costs you $20, your company, not you. So then, when you become a major company, you then get all these tokens available, and you can see it goes from 40, 60, 80, you know, all the way up to $80. Those are very expensive. So what this private does is it lets you 
tick, because you can build these in any order. You don't have to start from the left and go to the right. So you can just take your $80 token and just place it on the board for free. So that's worth $80, basically. So you're spending $40 to get $80, but look at this, you also get $10 in revenue every single operating round. So it pays for itself, and it gives you an $80 free token. So it is super duper nice. And of course, it's a private company that you would give to one of your train companies. And so this train company would then benefit from uh, you know, using that private. The cool thing is, is you can use the power of the private and still gain the revenue from the private. So that $10 revenue, you can get throughout most of the game. Uh, by the end, you're gonna wanna sell it or get, I'm not sell it, but, but close the company because there's gonna be more valuable things for you to do. That $10 is not gonna be as worthwhile at the end of the game, but in the beginning of the game, that $10 is huge. So, um, so anyways, uh, this is how a company looks, a company card. And then remember I said you can go national? Well, then you flip the card over and then this is what a national Norwegian company would look like. And so uh, it has completely different rules and we won't get into that at this point. This company is a whole lot of crazy stuff. It basically gives you three abilities. You're only allowed to use it for one of those abilities. And if you ever do use it, it closes. It's the only company I can think of that actually closes when you use it for its ability. Um, but um, I always have to look them up. Uh, it's in the rule book, of course, and so in a nutshell, one of them is it lets you change the stock value of your company. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's a very specific situation that I, it's the par value. We haven't talked about what a par, par value even is, but it lets you change the par value of a company. And so basically, uh, as long as your company is a regional, it will operate under a par value. And then when it becomes a major, it actually enters the stock market. So think of it that way. Um, so while it's a regional, you can change the par value. So you can par a company for you know $60 a share and then change it to $100 a share before it becomes a major and goes into the stock market. So that's something you can do. Uh, a second ability this has is you can, if somebody uh, sells your stock, your stock value drops, right? Um, the value of your stock would go down. This could actually prevent that. So you can play this card to prevent your stock value from going down. And that's even if you sell your own stock or even the company sells its own stock. So you can use it for that. And then the third reason, I can't even remember, it's hardly ever used. Um, I'll look it up, it's not that important. Uh, it's a very obscure situation and the other two reasons are much more powerful. And it also gives you a $10 revenue. The uh, third one, Star Harbor lets you create a free port. We haven't talked about ports, but ports are how you can transfer goods overseas, so you don't always need railroads. You can actually go via the Mediterranean Sea or over the ocean. You can even go to New York City in this game. Um, this has two abilities. It's a free port, which is already a nice ability. It counts as a token. Remember, we, you said we you need a token in order to... Um, uh, in order to, you know, run a route. And then thirdly, you can skip the city. So you can put this in a, a very low value city just for using the port, and then you don't have to count that city. Remember we said you have a two plus two train and you can only go through two cities. You can never go through a third. This will let you go through that port city and you don't have to count it as one of your two, okay? Um, I know we haven't talked about ports, but this one is usually a very uh, fought over item and it gives you $15 in revenue. This is the same thing except on land. You can lay, it basically counts as a free token. Uh, it doesn't count as a port of course, but it counts as a token on land and you can skip the land city. So you can use it to count as a token on land, but you don't have to actually count the city. You can just go right through it and uh, so that's a nice one there. Not quite as valuable as Star Harbor. Uh, the harbors are pretty nice. This one is very specific to England and France. And uh, you can see it has a number five on here because this occurs on 
phase five of the game. Remember the phases are the train levels and it gives you 15 in revenue. I'll uh, explain that real quick and let's move the camera. So right here you can see there's a ferry that goes from London to Lille, France. And this ferry um, can get blocked really quick. Um, it's a very valuable uh, area. All the trains from England want to go through the ferry. And then of course all the trains from France want to go through it because London is one of the most valuable places in the game. Um, and there's also a second metropolis of Birmingham over here that is also powerful. Um, just know and understand that um, uh, people are going to put tokens in London and then you can't go, uh, if you don't have a token, you can't go through London and then through the ferry. So what the ferry is, is it's actually, um, you can have four tokens in London, but you can only ever have two tokens in Lille. Because Lille is just not as big of a city, right? So what this ferry is, is this is a open, meaning you can go through this city uh, and it's not blocked, okay? The player who, who buys this is basically uh, taking on a strategy that they're gonna play in this region of the game. And this player has the right at any time to block the ferry. So they can just put a token here and now the only people that can go through this ferry are whoever has the tokens on both sides or one of the sides. And, and then the player who puts this down will have access to go through the ferry area. Even if, even if they don't have a token here, they can still go through it because the ferry allows them. Um, so that card is used for multiple ways. One way is to ensure that nobody blocks you. Uh, that is definitely the best way, um, but sometimes people use it to block others. And um, if you're planning on having a lot of companies in England or France, usually you buy it to prevent others from blocking you. Um, it is a uh, company that can only be used, only one of your companies can use that private. So if you own four companies, only one of them will benefit from the ferry. Um, but if you don't place the token of the ferry down, all companies benefit, including other players. So it's a very interesting one, and it's very specific to a strategy that, that if a player buys this, you know they're going to that region of the board, or, or they're sort of giving you a very strong hint. Um, it also gives you $15 in revenue, and in four operating rounds, that pays for itself, so it's not chump change. It's a really nice uh, moneymaker. Next is the Lumberjack Company. Uh, it's mining and lumber, actually. And so what this does is this is, a, you can put this on any hill or mountain. And remember, the hills and mountains are these green spaces. You can put it on any one of those, and it acts as a whistle stop. Now, the whistle stops, as you know, were making $10 when that example from the last video um, they can eventually make $20 as we get in the more uh, modern era. Uh, this particular company, uh, as you can see, when you get into the brown and gray era, is worth $40 and $60. Now, this company, this private, can be used by all the companies you own, not just one of them. So if you put this whistle stop somewhere where all of your, so let's say you own three companies or four companies, all four companies, if they are able to go through the whatever green space you put it on, um, you're making this whistle stop money every time. And it's only you and your companies that make this money. Everybody else that goes through there doesn't get to use uh, this uh, whistle stop. So it's a very uh, powerful whistle stop. It's not bad. And the revenue is pretty good too, 20 bucks. Now, the next one is Brant and Landau Engineers. And what that one is, is you're gonna get four tokens. It's in this bag, I haven't bothered to get them out yet. And those four tokens will let you plow through, the, basically just view it as a tunneling company. Remember this mountain that I looked at uh, was worth 60 bucks. So you would have to pay 60 bucks just to go through that mountain space. 
These are basically, uh, you could just lay the, the token down and you can go through for free. You don't even have to pay. Uh, so you get to lay through four mountains for free. And then of course, by the time you get to your fifth mountain, you would have to start paying again. And the other players are not allowed to use your track. So here's the thing, there's no such thing as track ownership in this game. If you lay a track, every player gets to use it. However, when you're using the this uh, Brant and Brandau engineers and you lay down basically what these are tunnels, those tunnels are exclusively yours unless that player is willing to pay the price of the tunnel. So um, here you can see it would cost $60 to go through this mountain. So I can put a track on here and not pay anything. It just uses up one of my four tokens. I then can go through this uh, for the rest of the game, no cost to me, but no other player can use it unless they pay the $60. If they pay the $60, then it becomes available for all the players, because remember, there's no such thing as ownership. Um, so as long as somebody pays the $60, then that is no longer exclusively yours, but for the longest time, uh, it can be, and you paid zero to go through that spot. So it's a really nice, um, I've seen people use it in Norway. See all this mountain range up here? Uh, the area I see it used the most is over here to go through the Alps and um, you know to go from France to Italy. Uh, that's a really good area. You can see that from Germany or Prussia, there's some opportunities. And then I've seen people go from Austria, Hungary, because they're trying to get to you know, Constantinople. So there's some mountain ranges here they need to get through. And then um, the second most popular use of it is once you get to Constantinople, uh, you can go to Levant, you know, Israel here, and you can see there's some pretty big mountains uh, between the two, and uh, they use it to plow through there, and then, of course, the other players would still have to pay, so then they have like a private route to, uh, to Levant, which is pretty sneaky, and it's very effective. The last one is Swift. Swift is a two plus two train. So when the two trains rust, the two plus twos, they will eventually rust. They rust, I think, on train phase four. Um, what this is, is this is a permanent two plus two train that, that you give to one of your companies after they rust. So it, this, is, this does nothing for you until then. But after the trains rust, you have a permanent two plus two and it does not count towards your train limit. So it's like an extra train you get to have that's a rule breaker that nobody else gets to do for the rest of the game. This usually means you have the most powerful train in the company, or most powerful company in the game, because you're getting extra revenue from this that nobody else can get. They have to use, so for example, let's say your train limit's two, they have to make the most money they can with two trains, you get to make the most money you can with three trains. So you're already at a huge advantage over the other companies. So um, the drawback to this is you'll notice there is no revenue. It makes nothing for you, and it costs 120 bucks. But uh, so this is a one of those things where you're investing now, and at the end game, this is the most powerful end game item you can get. Um, here's the problem: I told you that the early money is you know usually better because you want to invest early and then you get compounded interest off of that money, right? This is an investment in an end game strategy. And so you have to play really well to make this work. Uh, if you don't, um, this could really backfire on you. And I've seen many new people go after this and yes, they make great money with it, but because they went after this, they started off very slow. And so they're not as far along as the other players. Um, one drawback to 18xx games is it's really hard to catch up if you fall behind. Okay, I know that's a lot of explanation, but that's part of the coolness of this game. Those are all privates that are available. They all have these weird abilities. And then you get into these miners and they're doing the same thing. So um, I'm going to turn it so there's less glare. Uh, we have miner A here, which when this merges into uh, a major, uh, you it, the, the power, the ability is written right on the top. When merged into a major, the bank pays cash into the major's treasury equal to the current share value of the major, even if there's no major, no share available. And um, 
So, uh, so basically this is a nice way to just get cash. And I remember saying that this was player one's turn. Player one is Medici. And he's all about investing in others and banking and cash. So I'm going to tell you right now that his first bid is on that company. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the rest of these as we bid on them. And, uh, and let's get this going. So player two is Mother Russia first uh, and turn order. So he's interested in turn order and in Russian companies. So there's a couple of things he can do, but we're going to go ahead and do his first strategy, which I don't know if I necessarily recommend if you're a new gamer, but it's definitely the safest strategy. He is going to bid. Uh, remember, he was the double whistle stops. He's going to bid on being first. Now, player order in this game is weird. Player order in the game is player one through player five, period. Okay? But this is the first 10 turns of the game are up for auction. So if one player takes all 10 of these, that player will take 10 turns before anybody else gets to go. That's how crazy this is. But so um, even though he's player two, he's bidding on the right to go first in the game. And if he bids on this one and this one, he'll actually go first, second, and third before anybody else gets to go. Okay, so that's what he did. And um, I would say that he probably should have gone after something else first. And maybe, you know, because we're trying to play uh, all sides here, what would he do if he did go after something else first? Um, you know what? Uh, a better move for him would be to take this one. This one is very powerful when you have all your companies in the same region, like Russia, which is what he plans on doing. So he's going to go after that one. Okay, player three is Lord Wellington. He's all about the majors and himself. And player three, without a doubt, wants the best company in the game. That is his thing, and that is what he will do. Okay, so player four... Uh, oh, what, we should grab something else. Um, player four... I'm just looking for a different type of token. Um, we're going to use these KISS tokens here, KSS. Player four is trying to get an early OE run. So uh, for him, it's very important that he get the companies that let him go early. So he's actually going to bid for first in turn order. And let me think about this. Is there something else that can help him more? No, he, he wants to go first because there are certain companies that can do early OE runs much quicker than anybody else in the game. So he wants to take those companies before any other player can. Okay, so now it's our turn. And uh, let me just say something. Um, I may, this is why you play multiplayer. In a multiplayer game, they may not do this. I have one friend that would for sure take company L here more than any other company in the game. I have other friends that will take company K, which is somewhere here. Oh, K is covered up. There's a K here. Um, so there are companies in this game, these miners that are considered like to be super powerful. And those are the ones you see really get bid on by people. And I basically just did an entire first turn where I made it so I can choose whichever one I want. So I already think I may have <laughs> may have not played to the best of the abilities of these, these players. Because this is like fantasy football draft. If you guys have ever done fantasy football, um, if you take a kicker in the first round, um, that kicker might be the best kicker in the game, but you could have waited until round three or four to get him. <laughs> and um, that's what this phase is all about. And that's what I'm second guessing, is maybe I should have waited 
to uh, pick the kicker. Um, and this is also why you might want to just randomly assign these to people. But I wanted to show uh, this uh, slowly because this is how in a multiplayer game you're mostly going to play because this is a nice element of the game. It adds a lot of strategic element to it. And then also it, it introduces uh, rules so I can explain things as we go. So uh, I'm going to just stick with it and I will take... Um, so I'm going to take company L here. L is my favorite one in the game. And I would take it every chance I get. Um, so back to player one, uh, Medici. He's Italian and likes to invest in others. So uh, he is thinking here. And so uh, his thing would be he doesn't want to own too many companies or too many of these minor companies. But um, he does like to make money. So he's going to invest in something that will get him money. And so that is Barclays. That is definitely something a player like that would do. So now we get to Russia in turn order. And so the Russian company is concerned. And he's concerned because somebody took the first turn order. Um, uh, the thing is, is that if you are the Russian player, there are higher priorities. So he will, for his next one, he's going to take, I'm trying to find it here. I know it exists. Right here, G. So company G uh, lets you lay two extra tile points. Russia is the biggest country in the game. And the biggest flaw with Russia is you have to lay a lot of track. And so this lets him lay two extra, he gets two extra tile points to use during lay track step. Um, so that is huge for him. So he can cover more ground quickly. And that is an extremely, that is a perfect one for somebody who does the Russia strategy. All right, next is Lord Wellington. He's into majors and self. So um, he, what would he do next? I think he would, as player three, he would take company K here. This is the mail company that gets him, nope, nope. He would take D. D gives him more revenue for his companies. And, uh, I know it's a very long thing, but at the start of the game, he can make an extra $20 in one particular city. So he just gets to increase the value of that city by $20. And then at, after trading phase five, he can increase it. Uh, he can actually place it at a different location or the same location. And now he can um, do uh, $40 extra in one city. So this is all about increasing revenue for his companies. So now it's to us. And again, I'm feeling sheepish because there's no way I would get company L and company K. So let me think about this. Player one was who again? Or no, it's De Gaulle. Okay, De Gaulle. That, okay, now, now that makes sense. De Gaulle is going to use this token, and he's taking the male company. Because there's no way I would be able to get L and K in any game. So let's... Let's play this properly. And now it's my turn. And I happen to really like this mountain company. So I'm gonna take the mountain. Um, so now we get to Medici. This is the Italian who likes to invest in others. Um, Medici does not have a lot of interest in this opening phase. In fact, he wants to um, save his money so he can buy other people's stock. So what he's going to do is he's all about the revenue, so he's just going to buy this company that does nothing but give him revenue. So he's still going to get something. 
Um, but he just doesn't want to spend too much. So he's going to spend low. Okay, now we get to Russia. And Russia has another problem. You can see Russia has a lot of swampland. So that is something that Russia likes to do. The other one is, is this orange company. Um, this one counts all track upgrades as one tile point. So normally it costs you one tile point to lay like a yellow track. But if you want to upgrade it to a green or upgrade the green to a brown or a brown to a gray, you know, there's, then it costs you two tile points. It's always double whatever it costs to lay the yellow tile point. This lets you count all upgrades as just one tile point. The kicker here is you can't use it on cities. So it has to be on track. Um, that is a very powerful one for the Russia strategy. And so is the Blue Coast Company, this E Company here. This one gives him an extra 33% discount for laying track over swamp. Um, so let's not let's uh, talk about fantasy football again and not drafting the kicker in the first round. These two tend to go last. They're really nice, but they're the least valued. So he's going to bank on the fact that um, nobody's going to do that. So he's going to follow through with his other strategy, and he's going to take second in turn order. Um, and that's a $20 bid for him. Lord Wellington likes to invest in majors and self. And so he wants another minor company because that makes his majors more powerful. So looking at the options that are available to him, um, this is a really interesting choice, but I believe his best option is company H, which will let him have extra port points. And we haven't talked about that yet. But basically, when he's going over uh, ports and into water, uh, he will get extra discounts. Or, I'm sorry, not extra discounts. He gets, like, he gets to go more spaces uh, without, uh, for free. And, um, and that will help him uh, to do some pretty cool things. So that is important to him. And it's important for him to have miners because those help make his majors more powerful. That's what he's all about. So... Um, that is player three. Now we go to De Gaulle, who wants to do the OE runs early. So uh, for him, it's very important to have company C. C, I know there's a glare there, I apologize. But company C here, um, there's a turn order for when companies get to go. And trains rust the moment somebody buys a particular train that causes the rusting to happen. So if you're going last, uh, that's not good. Um, but what C does is it lets you pick, do you want to go first? Meaning you get to go before anybody else in the game. Or you can go in your normal spot. Or you can choose to go dead last. And so it's a very powerful thing where you get to manipulate your turn order. And uh, so he will do that. And it's not a bad one. Um, you have to use it wisely. But uh, I think he can do that. And now it gets to us. And looking at the, um, the miners that are available, uh, they're getting a little more slim picking, but there is still one more that I think is very powerful. We're gonna take J here, and that gives us a 10% discount on locomotives. So uh, that one is just raw money deduction, but it's good, okay? Uh, next, we get to Medici. He wants to invest in himself, or I'm sorry, in others. So Medici is, again, uh, wanting this phase to be over. So he's going to invest the least amount possible without passing. Passing doesn't do him any good. So he just took the first row, and this is demonstrating uh, how this works. The first row is now out of the game. Nobody can bid on those anymore, and so they belong to... Medici. And so he's going to have to pay for those, and we'll take care of that later. So at the, let's say the, the whole phase ended, uh, he owes 20, 40 bucks. So I'd have to go into his cash and take 40 bucks out and pay it to the bank. So I won't do that now. Uh, he's not done purchasing things yet, but these are the two things that he for sure has purchased. 
And in fact, I need to space these out more so we can have more ownership. So now we go to Mother Russia. <clears throat> now, the Russian company has G here. And is that it? Wow, he just has G. And he has, he's going second in turn order. Oh, and then he has this, uh, this lumber company here. So uh, he wants one more miner. Uh, every country can have two miners in it. He wants one more, and he is going to take this. No, he's going to take E. That one's more valuable to him. So he's going to take E. All right, now we get to Lord Wellington. Uh, he has already invested in two miners, and so now he wants to invest in... Uh, Maybe the Lord Wellington is giving away his strategy, but he is going to take the White Cliffs Ferry because the ferry between London and France is going to be important to him with the strategy he likes to do. Uh, next, we have de Gaulle, who wants to do OE runs early. De Gaulle is going to... He took Company C... Uh, as a miner, um, I think he wants to do, oh, he already has two miners. He took C and K. So he is going to, go third in turn order, because he wants to make sure he gets the company he wants. And, oh, did I skip Lord Wellington? Lord Wellington has one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Russia has one, two, three, four, and de Gaulle has one, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, so now it's our turn. Um, we took two miners <clears throat> and a private. Um, turn order is not as important for us. Uh, I think we can make any company work, to be quite honest. Um, but I do have this L company here. And L is, I want to get in a certain, there's certain spots on the board where the L company is very powerful. And then there's spots on the board where it's not as powerful. So I want to make sure I'm getting the right areas. So um, with that said, I feel that we would benefit the most from Star Harbor. So I want to be able to get some ports and and be able to skip counting the port. That gives me some flexibility on where I go in the game. And now we're back to player one, Medici. And remember, Medici is not very excited about owning a lot and spending a lot of money. Um, he already is going to buy company A here, um, but he is also going to take M. M is a company that you basically own the Pullman company. And so these Pullmans can be purchased by other players, and every time players purchase it, you get $15 to you. So um, it's a way to make revenue. And also the player who controls M gets one of these for free. So um, he's going to go that route. Uh, there was a few other choices for him. But uh, that's a good one. So now we go to Mother Russia. And Russia is... <clears throat> going to take turn order again. He wants to go fourth. And then we get to Lord Wellington. Lord Wellington uh, is which one again? He's the... Okay, he's got two... Two... He has spent a lot of money so far, Lord Wellington has, and Lord Wellington needs to get in on going early because uh, he has particular companies that are premium for him. So he's going fifth. And then de Gaulle wants to do OE early. He has... So he wants to...
This is actually quite interesting. Does he really want to do turn order? I mean, it seems silly. Let me think about this. No, he doesn't. He's going to take central circle. And next we go to uh, us. And uh, I think for our purposes, we're going to take another minor and we're going to take B. And we get to Medici again, investing in others. And he will It is free to take a seven, eight, nine, or 10 spot. See, it's a $0 bid. So he's a money miser. So he's gonna try to go seventh. So he's gonna try to at least go at some point in here, uh, but he doesn't wanna go you know, dead last. And so he's gonna take the seventh spot and it costs him nothing. Because like I said, he wants this phase to end. So now we go to Mother Russia. Uh, Russia is very happy with his situation he wants turn order because he needs to get his his companies selected um and this is one of the strategies in the game is you want to make sure uh if you know that you have a particular player who does russia and they're taking turn order like this you don't need to sweat <laughs> you know which ones he's going to take and so you can sort of just plan for that um this is where uh playing all sides yourself is a little more difficult and why the multiplayer game will be more challenging because they're not always that easy to predict. Uh, De Gaulle, uh, O.E. Early, uh, he... No. I just said Medici, then Russia, Lord Wellington. What did Lord Wellington... It's Lord Wellington's turn, isn't it? No, Lord Wellington went. Okay, so De Gaulle... is gonna take this last company, F. One, two, does he? No, 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 that would be a big mistake. De Gaulle's definitely taking this one. So by doing that, uh, everything finishes. So, so this goes to De Gaulle. Uh, this goes to Medici. And this one also goes, to, so we have this one here going to De Gaulle. Everything is done. This goes to us. And these two, both of these are going to Wellington. And then this is a double whistle stop. So this goes to Mr. Russia and this goes to us. And then we keep going. So you can see this row is done. So this, uh, is Medici and this one is us so you can see how the board just starts melting as soon as somebody buys the right things and now we look at the next row and see this one's not taken yet so the bidding continues so that was de Gaulle's turn and now it's our turn and um, We're going to take the eighth spot. Medici goes. He's taking the ninth spot. Uh, Mother Russia is going to go. And he will take the last spot. And then we get to Lord Wellington. And he doesn't mind at all taking this. So that's what he will do. And so uh, we now wrap up this phase. So now all this stuff just trickles away and I'm going to put this down so you can see the uh, the different players here. And so these both go to Russia and I'm gonna keep Russia stuff over here on this side. Um, the, uh, 
This is Medici's, so it's going there. These two are ours. So both of these companies are gonna go into my pile. This one belongs to De Gaulle, so we're gonna put it on De Gaulle's pile. And then these two are Wellington. So he has one, two, yeah, three miners. And then uh, the turn order is first and third are going to De Gaulle. Second, fourth, and sixth, and tenth. So four of the opening ten turn orders are going to Mr. Russia here. Okay. Then uh, Wellington is going to get the fifth spot. And Medici is going to get seven and nine. And then we get eight. And I know some of this is off camera. I'm just trying to speed this up. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set up the players. I have to pay for all their items because uh, all this stuff costs money. Remember, these are $120 each. Uh, these are all face value. We did not do any bidding wars. Remember in the actual game that you may play, you may end up in a bidding war. Um, I would say don't do it, but um, you know, every player has their own strategy. And um, so I will, I will get all these players set up. And uh, what you're gonna see me do is a lot of these, these are very large. And in a multiplayer game, I can have people sitting around my table and there's plenty of space for them to put these in front of them and use them. But in our case, uh, I wanna make this a little more concise because I'm just one person operating everything. Uh, I may uh, put these on note cards. So these little cards here, I may write the company name and just track everything that way. Um, I'm gonna try to figure out a solution for this. Uh, don't have a good one, uh, but I will see what I can do. And then uh, this concession phase took a very long time. And you may be thinking, geez, uh, but that's actually how the game actually plays, even in multiplayer. It will take a very long time and we haven't even started the actual game yet. <laughs> so this is all part of the setup. And welcome to 18xx. It's crazy. Um, it's crazy good. And this is exactly how it goes. So um, if you have any questions on this, let me know. Uh, I can't stress enough that some of you who have played this game are going to say, I value this company way more than that one. I get it. And I don't want to have that discussion um, some of it is I'm recording a video and thinking about a 30 things at once. Uh, yes, you can, you know, buy this game and play it yourself and play it however you like. I'm, I'm just trying to teach how the play works. And then, yes, I did not get into a bidding war. Yes, I know some players love to do that, but I guarantee you that if they play against me, they will lose. And, uh, cause bidding wars do not win this game. But uh, that's actually something I even talked with the designer about. I actually didn't like this part of the game. Uh, I don't think it's very valuable. But uh, anyways, um, that's it uh, for this first video. I will get this set up. I will take out the respective money pools, you know, pay everything. And then we can get started on the actual gameplay. And I hope you're enjoying this. And uh, thanks for watching.